I always wait to turn on that light. It's so bright. Oh my God. I don't want to make this video today. This one sucks. This one's one of the harder ones to talk about. Okay, let's turn the light on. Wow, all right. <laughs> oh my God, it's so bright. <sighs> it's Sunday and today I'm gonna to be packing up more orders than I've ever sold in my life. Welcome to Mushroom Hour podcast dropped Friday night after cats, they, they love to play in the morning. After I went to bed and I opened my store Friday morning and I woke up the next morning and my store was gone. It was wiped out. Everything was bought. And I had started making extra stuff for next month because I'm going to be busy doing a workshop and I just relisted all that stuff and now it's almost gone. It's crazy. Thanks, y'all. Some beautiful shit right there. And I feel gratitude most of the time for all of this amazingness. And for the longest time, I couldn't feel gratitude. Have you ever had that feeling like when something amazing and beautiful happens, like the biggest thing that you feel is terror for when it's gonna end? and how it's gonna get taken away. Have you ever gotten a raise and thought, I don't deserve this? They're gonna figure it out. Imposter syndrome. Meeting someone that's so amazing and beautiful and you're so certain they're gonna not like you that you sabotage it just to test them and you wind up running them away. There's this one emotion that can't live side by side with good things, with grace and beauty, with power, with gratitude, with love. It's one emotion and that's shame. And as soon as I say it, a lot of you are just gonna be like, no, nope, I'm not gonna listen to this. That's how repulsive shame is. And I started therapy 30 years ago, maybe. And I was in it for eight years and I kept hearing about shame, 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 shame. And I couldn't find it. And there's a good chance you can't find it either. There's a good chance that you're confusing shame with regret and guilt. And they are absolutely completely different things. Regret is healthy. Regret you're supposed to feel. That's a natural, healthy human emotion because we make mistakes and then we regret that we didn't do X, Y, Z ahead of time or beforehand and then we learn from it, you know? So regret, the regret's normal. Most people don't feel regret. They're feeling shame. They're calling it guilt. <laughs> guilt is when you hate yourself for something you did. Guilt is when you beat yourself up for something you did. Guilt brings with it a sense of having to pay and punishment. Those aren't shame. And I don't expect you to find shame in this video. But what I do hope is that you now know what you're looking for because I can tell you shame is gonna be at the root of most of your problems. And I'm gonna to explain to you what shame is and we're gonna see if you can feel it. Most people can't feel it. Most people have a pretty hard time finding it. And I know through all of my years of therapy, I never did find it. And I told them that, I'm like, no, I mean, I can, I feel this or this or this, but it doesn't, I don't, I, because I, they were telling me how horrible shame is to feel and I just couldn't find it. It would be until all the way through my life, until two years ago, when I felt what Amanita gave me that very first time I took it. 
So it was in the negative that I felt shame because I felt power. I felt gratitude and beauty. And I cried because it's the first time in my life I wasn't feeling shame. And that was that, that rebirth. Then I wanted to address the shame. And that's what I've been doing for the last two years. And when I took the blue version of the mushroom, I have to be careful because YouTube censors. Back in October, I took eight and a half grams. That entire trip is on video on my website, amaniadreamer.net, if you want to see it. And remember when I told you that the aliens, they scanned me and then they were messing in my brain and they took something from me? I'm going to make a whole video on that whole experience and what happened. It wasn't until, I guess, three months after that that I realized it had something to do with shame that maybe they weren't stealing anything important or good. It felt like they were stealing deep, important things to me. But I learned they were taking shame. Like, what the fuck is that? They were taking shame. And then once I realized that, I had to spend more time going, okay, but now what? And then it would be last month when I took Mad Honey and then a week later Soma for it all to make sense and get removed and change me permanently and deeply. And then I knew for sure, really, the role that shame plays. So let me tell you how awful shame is. It's so hard to feel, find, and talk about that I'm feeling weak in my chest knowing that I'm about to discuss it with you. So what shame is, is when you're a kid and you're just being you and living your best life and minding your own business and doing your thing and having a blast and being inquisitive and looking into things and messing with things. And then a parent walks in suddenly and looks at the mess and they go, what have you done? Look at this mess. The child, that feeling in that moment that goes from expressive beauty and wonder and fascination to just the sudden sense of, oh my God, what did I do? <sighs> that, that switch to, oh my God, what did I do? What? And then it takes this deep internal shift as the parent is talking. Most of you say, oh, I disappointed my parents. They're mad at me. That's their feeling. What happens in you is shame. I'm gonna warn you here, we're about to get into physical violence as a child. So if you have issues about that, this is your trigger warning. And if you wanna mute the sound, I'll make a, this motion to let you know when you can bring the sound back up, okay? Here we go. If you were hit as a child, if you have a lot of physical abuse issues, I do too. That is the ultimate in shame. This is gonna be hard, so here we go. When you're hit as a child, what's happening is this adult that you love, that you need for your survival, that is supposed to love you and teach you about self-respect. They not only shame you verbally and emotionally, but then what they're gonna do is they're gonna raise their hand up and you're gonna see that hand come up. You're gonna see that threat. And then they're saying, not only do I not give you autonomy and respect and the right to own your physical space and your physical body, I'm going to invade it with my hand, with fear and terror, and then I'm going to actually assault you it's not spanking, it's assault. And I'm going to make it actually affect you and cause a physical pain in your body so that I anchor not just the emotional message that you are worth less than a human being who has the right to own their space. I'm going to say as the person in authority, you don't have that right, that I have the right to violate the space 
steal that integrity from you and then harm that integrity by showing you that you, you don't own yourself that other people have the right to break into your sense of self and damage it. And not just emotionally, but then we're gonna anchor it with physical, with physical pain. And when you get it twice like that, the verbal shame along with the then physical assault, that anchors it deeply into your nervous system, through the brain, through the mind, through your emotional system in the mind, but then physically into where you were hit. And I have all of that as well. I was held with one hand so that I couldn't get away and then hit right here in this quadrant of my back repeatedly for years, most of my childhood. It's no wonder then because I had chicken pox later in my life when I got shingles, that is where it expressed itself. That was the nerve that was the most vulnerable. Why? Coincidence that all of my pain that I have in my body is right here and it stems from here that I've had to go through years of therapy and acupressure therapy and needle therapy and massage therapy, chiropractic therapy because of headaches and migraines that would start here in this nerve and come up my neck because I used to be grabbed in the neck and be moved around and then hit Everything, everywhere that I've ever been physically assaulted is where my pain is today. And I still struggle with it. And it is my hope through finding this shame with all this work with that. I had to step in here and remake this, add this part in. I forgot to add this part in. That I will remove not only the shame from my mind, but also stop this pain and I believe it's how people wind up with limited range of motion and old and sedentary because they're old versus the old people who are still going because of physical assault and childhood shame that's anchored in our nervous system and if you can work that shit out then hopefully you can live a better life while you're here and start increasing your range of motion again and claim your physical body back okay you can come back now it's safe. When a teacher says, you should know better. How many times have I taught you this? There's no reason for you to have failed this or missed this on the test. Even if you feel, but I thought I got it right. What is happening internally that most people gloss over and can't feel because they protect is, yes, what is wrong with me? Why didn't I get it right? I'm so broken. That's the thought. The feeling is shame. When a boss says, no, you can't call out today. I'm sorry. I don't care how sick you are. You need to get here. And you're like, Dude, no, uh, no. Well, then you're clearly not a team player because that's not how this company works. And that's not how we do things around here. But you're going to let everybody down. You're going to put all that work on everybody else in your head if you do this oh god yeah i'm gonna make everybody else suffer i need to just suck it up and go to work that's shame it's not what most people turn it into which is oh i care about my fellow co-workers i can't let them suffer i gotta do it for them that was the protective sense of valiance. That's manufactured. What happened that you're trying to cover? Shame. Shame on you for trying to take care of yourself. For being sick. For needing a day off. Ugh. Who was I to think? That's so selfish. That's so awful. What is wrong with me? Those are the words. The feeling is shame. Shame is so insidious that once you know what to look for, you'll see that it's probably 90% of your experience. And now it's not supposed to be that way. You weren't born like that. You were born beautiful. And perfect.
but after all you've done on this planet since you've been here. After all the things you've done and the choices you've made that brought you here, you're still beautiful and perfect. And I'm not just saying that. Keep watching all these videos. You'll eventually figure it out. There's no mistake you can make that will render you less than beautiful and perfect because it's a fucking mistake. Watch my other videos in this series. It's a mistake. It's a mistake. It's a mistake. If you make consistently bad choices, you're still doing the best you can in that moment. That's your best because somebody did something to you along the line where you were gaslighted enough that that's the best you could do. Or how about this? You might be neurodivergent and not know it. So many more people are neurodivergent and don't know it. And neurodivergent people, not just autistic people, all neurodivergent people, get burned the fuck out. Easy. And then the most they can do is maybe get some food on a good day. I know now about it. And I'm going to make a whole video on panic and anxiety and where it's actually coming from and how to find it. it took a lifetime to find out that I was neurodivergent and autistic. Now I build these days into my life. But imagine being autistic and being told you're broken permanently. Therapists saying that they can't fix you or help you because you willfully refuse to change. That is some serious shame. And when I know I'm intelligent, deeply, passionately loving, perfectly capable as a child, and then every single person in authority tells me how broken I am, it is a wonder it took me this long to become suicidal. Because what shame does, it's the opposite of your chi or ki energy. It is the opposite of your personal power. It's the opposite of owning your space, which is what this mushroom gives us and teaches us. That owning our personal space, which is why I got mine back. It's why I don't have the shame anymore. When you are told how worthless and broken you are by every person and every situation and everything that you want and it's all taken away from you, you begin to chip away at it for yourself until you're nothing but shameful, worthless, and shouldn't be here. I can promise you if you have, if you have persistent and consistent panic or anxiety you are filling your entire being with shame. You're doing it for yourself. I'm not saying others aren't helping, but after a lifetime of others doing it for you, you start to just do it for yourself. This, this turns that around. It took me a lot of use and a lot of high doses and, and some other substances thrown in. But when you feel to the point where you are suicidal. That's shame. Yes, even when you just want to leave because you're tired of living the way you're living, you're tired of pain, you're tired of misery, you're tired of panic, you're tired of anxiety, and you just want to go. Still shame. I know on the surface it just looks like exhaustion. It just looks like I can't do this anymore. I promise you. It's shame. Self-hate lives just above shame. That's another beautiful feeling. Shame is the core emotion. And now I call it out. And I don't know if any of you will ever see it in my comment section because my videos about that have been taken off of YouTube and are now on amanitadreamer.net. But when they were here and people would just show up and be assholes, especially like my foraging videos, pick shaming and stuff, and how I use the mushroom, how I teach, how I talk, how I look, those comments are shame. And now that I know that shame can make me suicidal, shame has been the issue my whole life, shame is why I had panic and anxiety, that is the one thing I will never allow to come from anyone toward me ever again. I'll, I'll call that shit out. That usually makes people leave. We are so repulsed by shame that if someone even says the word, 
It's, it's like they shit on themselves and tried to wipe it on you or something. Like, it's repulsive. It is such a repulsive emotion. And yet, we're harboring it and living with it inside of us, carrying it around all the time. And then I want to say that 99.9% .9 of all aggressive and violent actions and behaviors are an attempt to cover up shame. Shame is the reason for all of the wars and all of the billionaires who hoard their money. Shame is the reason for hoarders in, in general, no matter what they're hoarding. Shame is the reason for body dysmorphia and eating disorders and the use of drugs that are destructive. Y'all wonder why I talk about this the way that I do when you're dealing in these core emotions, these core emotions are what drive the behaviors that are destroying each other and ourselves in this planet. And that is the one that fixes it. Shame is the reason for all of the negative emotions you tell yourself about yourself. And shame is the reason why when something good happens to you, like your Etsy store selling out twice, that instead of being able to just sit in the beauty and the love and the glory and the appreciation and the gratitude and the love of it, all you can think of is, I don't deserve this. Something's about to go wrong. It's going to go terribly wrong. It's going to get returned. People are going to be... No, I'm trying to... <laughs> People are going to be disappointed. They're going to send them back. That's shame. <laughs> Please stop. Is it any wonder then that of all the people that need beautiful things the most, it's people that have a lot of shame, that are having panic and anxiety, that are feeling defeated, that are exhausted. Those people need the joy, the beauty, the love, the, the safety, the comfort, the ability to breathe. And you can't because shame is taking its place. It's sitting there instead. And you can say, yeah, but what about just trauma? Like, what I went through with Hurricane Katrina, and I lived with everything happening that I couldn't have anything good. Everything kept getting taken away from me. Just one after for a freaking decade, I lost everything. Oh, the cats are in a mood. After a while, you just get trained, and that's PTSD, right? Shame is still underneath that. Because when the bad things first start happening, when the bad things first start happening, there's the shock and the pain. But then when you can't do anything to make it stop, that's when the shame starts. Now, normal healthy people don't do that to themselves in the face of adversity. People who were not shamed as children, which is very few of us, they have such a good sense of self that when they wind up in a really shitty situation and things just keep going wrong, they break it down. Well, we can talk about that. That's another whole survival thing. People who survive these I shouldn't be alive events, you know, like stranded in the ocean and stuff. People that just really shouldn't have made it out of some unbelievable stranded or awful wildlife experience those people the survivors a lot of them die but the ones who survive there there was a study done on on the ones who survive and the traits that make up those survivors and one of them is that is this ability to not internalize what's happening that is some strong, powerful, key life force energy right there. That is the opposite of shame. Those people exist. It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> I'm happy to say today that I feel like <clears throat> the bulk of my shame is gone. But I wonder if it'll ever be gone, like all of it. We'll see. I have a long ways to go with entheogenic use. It'll be interesting to find out. I'm definitely going to be using the blue one again to go deeper into the, all that because like when this, when my Etsy store, when all of it happened, I walked around in a fog yesterday, not really knowing what to think. 
I wasn't negative. I felt amazing about it. I felt gratitude. I felt all that love, man, the love. I could feel it. But also there were a few voices going, okay, these people are new, they don't know you, they're gonna expect one thing, and I think they're gonna get high off this, and they're gonna be trying to trip, and then they're gonna get all mad, and then, and I was like, yeah, but that's on them because that they're not reading the fact that this is a blend, and it says in the ad, you know? But mostly I was in this weird fog yesterday, and I think it's because my body doesn't know what to do with not shame. I'm so new to being without the bulk of it that when something amazingly good and beautiful happened, I wanted to embrace it, but also it was like, eh? It's like there's this caved out, dredged out, empty space where the shame used to live that I'm slowly filling. And it had nowhere to go yesterday. But I woke up today really happy and I'm really looking forward to it. It's an incredible amount of orders. Like it's all I'm gonna be doing today. And all I'm gonna be doing while I pack it is just feeling an immense amount of love and gratitude, which I will pack into every one of them. And that is nothing short of miraculous. It is magic and you wonder if you wonder why I devote my life to this thing, like, it didn't just save my life, it gave me life. This is living. This is the opposite of shame. I don't want you to feel shame, but I'm going to wish for you that you feel shame. Because it is the hardest thing to feel. It's so hard to find, but finding it is the beginning getting rid of it. And so I wish you to find it because you are beautiful and perfect because your panic and anxiety has a reason for existing. And the fact that you're exhausted and turning it inward and getting depressed and hopeless and powerless, that's not fair. It's not right. It's not who you are and it's not what you came here to do. And shame is the one that's fueling all that. So I wish that you can learn what it feels like so you can name it. And then you can start getting rid of it and asking the fungal elders for help on that. Because you're, you're divinity. The fact that you got a meat sack delivered to you and you became it and are here inhabiting it that you have an ego that has been installed as your vehicle through which to play here means you have divinity. Divinity can't coexist with shame. So let's get rid of the shame, okay? Because I love you. And I want you to be part of this tribe. And I want you to enjoy it here. Amityadreamer.net. Buy me a coffee if you feel like I'm helping you at all. Love you, beautiful people. Bye.